Hey kids, Flexing Teacher Weber here. I hope you're having a good day. I wanted to show uh, what we've been doing in math recently with multiplying mixed numbers. Now, how we started out is we started out just talking about how we might multiply two-digit times two-digit number. And I got the kids to, tr to show me some things, and these are some of the things they did. Um, some kids showed me the standard algorithm, we call that, where you do write the numbers like that, and then you do five times two is 10. Carry the one. Four times two is eight, plus that one is nine. And then you're gonna multiply through by this, this two, but it's actually 20. So we'll write a zero down there. And 20 times five, or two times five is 10. So we'll write down zero, carry the one, and two times four is eight plus one is nine. We add those up and we get 990. So many kids showed that, nothing wrong with that. Excellent strategy. Um, my personal opinion, kids often struggle with it, but good strategy. Um, some kids showed me this. Um, I call this the grid method or um, columns, you might call it. You take the 45 and you break it up into 40 and 5. You take the 22 and you break it up into 20 and 2. And then you multiply each of these numbers. So 40 times 20 is 800. And 20 times 5 is 100. 2 times 40 is 80, and 2 times 5 is 10. Basically, this is sort of the longer version of this. The algorithm is the shortcut of this. You're doing all of this in the algorithm, but you're not showing all this. I personally like this because it takes into account all of the place values. How you finish this up is you just add up all your products, 800, 900, 80, 990. And that's how you get 990. Um, we also talked about something called having and doubling. So 45 times 22, you could double the 45 and make it 90. You could have the 22 and make it 11. And 9 times 11 is 99. Add on that extra zero for 990. Now, those are all excellent methods for multiplication. Um, and what I also showed the kids, because I wanted to make a connection to what we're going to do with multiplying mixed numbers, I showed them something called the area model. So we talked about how to calculate the area of a rectangle, you can do length times width. You do a multiplication. So what we did is we drew a rectangle, and we would say on this one, the long side of the rectangle is 45. And the short side of the rectangle was 22. So this is the multiplication question that we were working on. But what we do is we break this rectangle into parts. We say, you know what? We're going to go this distance. We're going to estimate a bit and say this distance right here is 40. At that point, I'm going to say this distance right here is 5. And I'm going to draw a rectangle down. And then on the other, the shorter side, I'm going to say from here to here, that distance uh, is 20. I'm just going to switch some things up here. The whole distance is 22. From there to there, I'll say that's 20. And then I'll say this distance here is 2 for 22. And at that end point, I'm going to draw... all the way across. So what I've got now is I've got four rectangles that I can calculate the area of. The area of the larger rectangle is 40 times 20, which is 800. The area of this rectangle is two times 40. This distance is 40. And two times 40 is 80. The area of this rectangle is 5 times 20. This distance is 20 for 100. 
and then this really small rectangle, it's got a short side of 2 and a longer side of 5, and 5 times 2 is 10. So we calculate the area of each of those rectangles, add them all up, and we also get the answer of 990. This is actually a visual representation of this one right here. Using this area model can help us multiply mixed numbers. So what we did next, I'll skip ahead a bit here, is we did this same idea with multiplying mixed numbers. What we did was four and a half times two and a third. And what we said is that the long side of this rectangle, so this distance, the long side right here, would be four and a half. So I'm going to make that side four and a half. And the short side would be two and a third. But I'm not going to leave them like that. I'm going to break them into smaller parts. I'm going to estimate a distance. I'm going to go all the way across and say that distance is about four. And when I get to there, I'll draw another rectangle down and I'll say this shorter distance is a half. And then on the other side, I'll go down to here and I'll say that distance is two. And when I hit that point, I'll draw a rectangle across and then I'll say this remaining distance is the one third. So just like the other question, I have four rectangles now that I can calculate the area of. So let's do that. This rectangle right here has a length of four and a width of two. So four times two equals eight. That area is pretty easy. This rectangle right here has a short side of a half and its long side matches that side. So it's got a long side of two. So to calculate the area of this rectangle, I would do two or two over one times the short side one half. And when I do that, I can cancel out the diagonals and I just get one times one and one times one and that area equals one. Then I've got this long narrow rectangle right here. That long side is four. And the short side is one third. So I can do four or four over one times one third. And when I work that out, I get four over three. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. We also have this small rectangle that has a length of a half. And then this side matches that side. So it's got another side, a shorter side of one third. And to get the area of that one, we do a half times a third, which is one sixth. So what we're left with now are four products. This rectangle was an area of eight. This was an area of one. This was four over three. And this was one sixth. To get the total area, I have to add up all those parts. So I have to add up eight plus one plus four over three plus one over six. Now, eight plus one equals nine. For adding up the fractions, we need a common denominator. The common denominator of three and six is six. So I would do three times two is six and four times two gives eight over six plus one over six. And when I add those up, that's nine holes and nine over six. I can simplify this fraction by dividing it by three and I get that that's nine and three over two. And then three over two is the same as one and a half. So this works out to 
10 and a half. That's a huge problem. I like the kids doing that because it really um, has a lot of good mathematics in it. And it really gets them practicing things like estimating and finding rectangles and finding area and adding fractions and multiplying fractions. But it's not efficient. I do expect them to be able to do a question or two like this. But in my next video, we'll look at a more efficient way to multiply mixed numbers. But what this shows you, it shows you what's happening when you're multiplying mixed numbers. You're actually multiplying four different parts of the mixed numbers, right? Um, to get four rectangles or four different products. Um, in the next video, we'll look at a more efficient way to do this. Uh, I hope that helps with the area model, though. That's all for now. Flexing Teacher Weber, out.